next one, this one probably involves the most thinking of, the re of any of the problems we're doing, just because we haven't done it in a while. When we do domain, every time we do domain, we ask ourselves the same question. Is it a fraction? Is it a square root? So x squared plus 2, is it a fraction? Is it a square root? Then what's my domain? All real numbers. Here's why. Because I can plug in any x value I want, and, it go, and it's fine. I can plug in 100 there and square 100 to add 2. I could plug in negative 600 and still solve it. Rachel, I'm going to do a lot here. Okay, so I'm not going to do B, but I'm going to do C and D. I'm going to make up new ones. Okay, so put these on your paper. So here's letter C. So for letter C, let's do 3 over X minus 6. Okay, and I'm going to find the domain. So again, we ask ourselves a question. Is it a fraction? Yeah, it's a fraction. What do we not like about fractions? Zero on the bottom. There's restrictions, and Kaylee said it, we don't like zero on the bottom. That's undefined. We don't like it to be undefined. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out where we get zero, and then we're going to go from there. So for a fraction, you're going to set what's, equal, what's on bottom equal to zero, and I'm going to solve. So what's my x going to be? Six. Once you find that, then think about that number. If I plugged 6 into my problem, what would I get in my denominator? Is that good? No. That's bad. So my answer then is going to be, I could pick any number in the whole world. I can pick any real number, but x cannot be 6. Because if it is 6, I get 0 in my denominator, and that makes it undefined. I don't like that. Yes, I would like you to put all real numbers. All real numbers. Just do it. Questions on C. So if it's a fraction, set the denominator equal to zero. It cannot be that. No, we don't do intervals for this. We're just putting the restrictions. Okay? So for the second one here. So I'm going to pick another one. Here's letter D. And this is a little bit different than the one you have on your paper. Uh, but it's a good, a good problem as well. Let's do 7. Square root of 7 minus x. The square root of 7 minus x. We ask ourselves a question. Is it a fraction? Yeah. Is it a square root? Yeah. yeah, it's a square root. What what do we not like about square roots? Negatives. We don't like negatives. We don't we can't take the square root of a negative, it's imaginary. So we can use any number in the world, but but numbers that get me negatives, because we don't like taking the square root of negatives. So here's what we'll do. Just like this, we're going to set what's underneath the square root equal to 0. So 7 minus something gets me 0. What's my x going to be? 7. If I plug 7 into my problem, 7 minus 7, and then I take the square root of that, what do I get? 0. 7 minus 7 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Is, is taking the square root of 0 OK? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So 7 fine. Now remember how we did this. We said, okay, 7 works. And if you're not good at this, this is why we do it. Then we're going to try a number bigger than 7, and we're going to try a number smaller than 7. If I plugged 8 in here, what would I get? A negative. Can I take the square root of a negative? That one doesn't work. If I plugged in 8, I'd get 7 minus 8. I'd take the square root of negative 1. Bad. We don't like that. Okay, so then we plug in 6. If I plug in 6, yeah, I get 1. I can take the square root of 1, so that works. So my answers here need to be 7 and less than 7. So my x needs to be less than or equal to 7. There's my answer. Does that make sense how we did it? So if it's a fraction, set your denominator equal to 0 and solve. And then it can't be that. If it's a square root... Set it equal to zero and solve, and then try numbers above it and below it to see which way we want to go. Do we want to be bigger than that or less than that? Domain is probably the trickiest one. That's the one you're going to have to go back and think about a little bit. Questions? Number eight is probably the most missed question when we first come into class. So it says f of x is that, g of x is that. It says find f of x minus 2. So if I wanted to find f of x minus 2, what 
what I do? Plug it in. I would take x minus 2, and I would plug it right in there for x. I would take that x out, and I would put x minus 2 in its place. Okay? So my problem would look like this now. 2 x minus 2 squared minus 3. So this is where we make mistakes. Know what your steps are here. What is my next step that I need to do? Don't distribute the square. That's so bad. Don't do that. That's the thing that makes me the saddest. Because it's not distributing. If you distribute it, you get x squared minus 4. That's not what we're doing. What does x minus 2 squared really mean? Yes. Okay. That's not distributing. That's foiling. Okay. Because pe what people do, and you, you're right. I understand what you're saying. People love to do this. They square both of those things. That's bad. Don't do that. We want to do x minus 2 times x minus 2. We want to foil that out. Okay, so I'm going a little bit over on the side of my paper, and I'm going to foil out what's being squared. So I'm going to get x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. So I'm going to now plug that back in. So it's going to be 2x squared. So when I had any time you have parentheses squared, you need to foil it out. So I did that. Okay, I foiled it out. Now what? Distribute the 2. 2x two squared minus 8x plus 8 minus 3. Then I'll subtract the 3. 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. There is my answer. A little annoying. You have to know your steps, but not terribly difficult. Questions on anything else on the front side of that review? So G of F of so that so if it said your example says is it G of F? Okay, so G of F of X means you start on the inside. So you would be starting with this and you would take it and put it right there. Okay, you start with the inside, you plug it in for the other.